Hey, what's up guys and girls? Now this video isn't going to be as clean as my usual videos because I'm just going to record it all the way through. I wanted to do a series where if I'm at the office and I come up with this idea that I think might help people, I'm just going to create a video, do something just like quick and dirty so you guys can just like go through those videos and have an idea of some of the processes, like some of the thoughts that I go through uh, to solve problems using Quasar. Now, in this video, my problem was related to using lists. So whenever I was creating lists um, inside of a context menu, I would often find myself recreating components. Let me just give you an example here. So let's go ahead and create a list. And this is going to be a list of files, which is related to the exact problem that I actually had today. This is with um, returning files to a user. So let's imagine we've got some files here in an array. We're going to give this a label of my dash file dot PDF. And let's just do another one for this example. And we'll call it your file dot PDF. So I'll go ahead and save that. And now let's create a list that basically just spits them out. Q dash list. And actually I think, um, by the way, I'm using uh, the online uh, coding platform. I can't remember what it's called. It's called like um, a code sandbox. Yeah, so I'm not really used to this editor, but it'll be fun to kind of like explore it. And it'd be nice to be able to just open this up in a Quasar project and quickly do videos for you guys. Anyway, that's enough preamble. So let's say Q dash list, and then we'll have a Q dash item and a Q dash item dash section here. And let's just see if this works. My section, save it. And it doesn't look like, oh, there we go, it's showing up. It does take a little bit longer when I'm using uh, this to see my results. So now we can iterate over all of the items by saying v-4 file in files. And then we'll have to give that a key equal to file.label. So I'm basically um, betting on the fact that these are going to be unique, but usually that would be an ID. So there we go, they're showing up. Might as well use that label. And we can say file.label here. And now they should come through. Cool. And now let's do the part where we have a context menu. So what I wanted to do was have it so that when you right click on one of these, you get a context menu and you can delete or download the file. Okay. And keep in mind, I already have a button for deleting a file and I already have a button for downloading a file. That might give you a little bit of a hint to the problem I'm about to hit here. Okay, so what now? I think I can just come down here and say Q dash pop up, whoop, dash proxy. This is great. I can't actually look at my fingers while I'm doing this. So it teaches me to type properly. <laughs> and now I can actually say here to make it a context menu. Now this is really cool. By adding context menu, that means that on a mobile device, I can long click on this to bring up a menu, to bring up this pop-up menu, or right click on a desktop device to bring up that menu, which is really, really cool. Now usually what you would do here is you'd say Q dash list, very similar to what we did to show these items. Q dash item, Q dash item dash section, and then you would have here, for example, delete, or let's say download first, download, and then let's copy paste that down and have another one that's called delete. This is actually quite similar to my normal editor. I like it. Oh, I don't like that formatting though. <laughs> so now I can right click on this and I get those context menus. And of course, we're also going to make it so that these are clickable. So I'm gonna alt click there. Wow, even alt clicking works. This is cool. All right, so that's not showing up. What have I done wrong here, guys? Ah, and of course it's because I've only got them on the context menu items. I also wanna add them up here as well. Yeah, so they're all clickable. So there we go, now they're clickable and I can right click on this and we get the download and delete list items. The problem is now, like I said before, I already have a download button and a delete button. And so I would really want to reuse those buttons here or reuse the logic there rather than using a list. Now, one pattern that I used to use, however, I no longer use this anymore, but I just want to show you something you could do. 
you could say, for example, um, on on click delete file. So what I do is I create a component like that on click delete file. And then what would happen was anything inside of this component, when it was clicked, it would delete the file or open up a context menu that then open up like a dialogue or something where you could then delete the file. So then in this example, I could basically throw this, oh sorry, throw this part here inside of there, meaning that when it's clicked, the file is deleted. And I could also use this on the button. Therefore, everything is reused. However, what I came to realize is that the cube button component is ridiculously flexible. And rather than putting in all of that extra work, I wanted to see if I could just use the cube button component in these scenarios instead, just because I like the feeling of creating a button to delete something or a button to download something rather than using that clickable pattern that I just showed you then. And so I decided to give that a try and this is what I came up with and I think it works really nice. So let's delete all of that and we're going to put a div in here. Now the reason we have a div in here is because the buttons do not stack unless they're sitting inside of a div. Now let's go ahead and add a button. So we can say Q dash button here. Now, of course, like I mentioned before, in my scenario, that might be something like uh, delete file button. But for the sake of keeping this video simple, I'm just going to say Q dash button. And now we can add in here an icon and let's set that to download because we'll do the download one first. No caps. And the reason I'm going to do that is because usually, as you might know, a button automatically capitalizes, oh whoops, let me just put a label in there as well, is equal to download. Yeah, so by default, if I have a label of download, it's going to capitalize the whole thing, but I want a kind of a context menu-y type feel. And to do that, I simply say no caps. So let's say that, nice, that's looking good. In fact, that's pretty much exactly how I want it. Like really, really simple stuff here. And now we can go ahead and just throw in another button. It's actually that simple. So this could be delete, and I believe there's an icon called delete. Virtually the same thing there. Now notice that they're showing up side by side. How did I fix that? Ah, oh, first we need to make these full width. So how about we say full width? I think that's a property, or will I have to use a class for that? Or it's like fluid or something like that. I don't want to keep you waiting, so I'll just quickly try this. And if it doesn't, we'll just use the class. Yeah. Anyway, for now, let's just say class is equal to full width. And now they're stacking on each other. However, we got that annoying shadow, which kind of ruins the effect. So let's go ahead and make those flat. All right, so starting to look good. We want these to be on the left side. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I can alt click here. Oh gosh, butter, butter fingers. Align is equal to left. So now they're going to align to the left side. Nice. And the last thing I want to do is get rid of all this space on the right. And to do that, I'll just simply come in here and say style is equal to max width. And maybe 100 pixels. Let's try that and adjust. Okay, so it's going to have to be wider. I reckon 140 might make it make it look good. There we go. Looks awesome. So now we've got a download button and a delete button. So now what I can do is I can create, and I've actually done this, like I've done this in my day-to-day -day life at work. We can simply create then a delete file button and I can use it here and I can use it in other places around my app simply because it's got so much flexibility. I can make it look exactly how I need it to look in these different scenarios. But do know that that pattern I showed you before, the clickable pattern exists as well. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And yeah, let me know if you like these kinds of videos. Um, haven't had a, chance, had a chance to sort of like test the sound and all that kind of thing. So, you know, let me know if you'd rather me just do the more professional type videos or if you like having these little tidbits.